Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. I'm Sonia aka Sonia Blade. If you're new here, welcome, welcome. And if you are returning, well, welcome back. So today's story time is going to be basically, I'm going to be finishing up um, The Real Teen Mom. I started it a few months ago and then I kind of fell off just because I explained in some of my other videos that I just had like this plateau where I had hit and I wasn't feeling very creative anymore for a while and then I decided to go ahead and jump back in and just started doing a lot of different things um and it's been going a lot well for me but I do know that I'm at the end of this series I um if you're new here you need to go back and watch part one and part two mostly this tea time is going to be me talking about what happened between me and baby daddy because I was also talking about baby daddy baby daddy is definitely um he is the the father of my two older daughters the guy that I had um children with in high school so he is very much a part of this story but I want to go ahead and just finish it because we're at the end and this is going to be the last series on this um so that way starting on Fridays I can start doing my cosplays I have started doing cosplays um, I started a TikTok last week. Um, I've downloaded some stuff. I did the first tutorial, makeup tutorial on it. I'm not going to do it for every single cosplay, but if I feel like it's a creative part that I can do, because mostly I focus on the makeup part. Uh, I like to show the transformations, but if you don't have me on TikTok, then I suggest you go because I've been downloading pictures and videos, and then also on my Instagram, I've been downloading the videos and the pictures, um, but today I decided to send it St. Patty's Day. Um, I didn't go out for St. Patrick's Day today, but I did buy an outfit, so I want to go ahead and try to do just like a small St. Patrick's Day look, put the outfit on. I'm not going to show you the full entire thing, so where I left off, I was talking about my oldest daughter. Um, she, you know, I was having problems with her, you know, she was just a very troubled child. Um, I didn't know why she was, but we went through a lot of stuff with her. Um, again, when I first had my kids, you know, I was in high school and Kevin is the code name that I use for baby daddy. And so Kevin and I, you know, we got along really well. We co-parented really well. Um, he was there for me when it came to the girls, I had both girls when I graduated, and um, I just went through a lot of stuff with my oldest daughter. Now, when it came to my second daughter, I really didn't have issues with her. She really didn't give me any problems. She was a sweetheart. She was a mama's girl. As much as she likes to say that she's not, she's still a mama's girl very much um, to this day, and she's 20, 20 years old, <laughs> but I know that should go to tell you, like, I'm old, you guys. I know I probably don't look old, but I'm old, so... Um, she just was a mama's girl. She stuck by my side. You couldn't leave her with anybody. You couldn't leave her anywhere. She always wanted to be with me. She was that baby when you go into the bathroom, she would stick her chubby fingers under the door and be crying and laying there on the floor until I got out of the restroom. So she was that child. Uh, very sweet, very loving, kind-hearted. Um, is she still like that today? No. She has a good heart and she still wears her heart on her sleeve. She has a good head on her shoulders. She's just very mouthy. I don't know where she gets that from. I don't know. There's no telling where she gets it from. You know what I mean? She does still have a very good heart. She wants everybody to get along. She hates when people don't like her. She is a social butterfly. Um, and she was very much like that even as a child. So being a teen mom was one of the hardest things I had to go through. I mean, I, I do not advocate for it at all I don't I, I said it before I do not advocate for it now do I regret my children no I don't I, I don't regret them at all I'm 37 I have a 21 year old and a 20 year old my sister just dropped a baby last year yeah mm -mm. um while my friends now and acquaintances and people that I know family members are dropping babies and they can't do certain things because they have these babies I'm already over it. Like, I'm done. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I can go and do whatever I want. I have freedom now. Um, it's been great. So, again, I'm not condoning having a child young. I'm just saying it's it's the cards that were dealt to me, and so I just deal with them as I as I have. I mean, you can't really change your life when stuff happens. You know what I mean? So I just I just deal with it and. 
it didn't really dawn on me until the girls started getting older that I realized that, hey, you know what? It wasn't so bad. It's not so bad now, but the struggles that I went through along the lines as a teenage mom, they were tough. They were tough. The one thing I will say is you do need to get your life together. You need to get your life together and go through your struggles at a young age because everybody finds themselves at a young age, you know, in their early 20s. Does their partying, does their traveling, does whatever, and then settle down and have a child because you sacrifice your whole life for them. And not only that, but I made a lot of mistakes. I did. I made a lot of mistakes. I I admit it. I'm very open about it. I'm only human and I made a lot of mistakes. And unfortunately, my children had to be there to see that. My children had to be there to witness that. It doesn't mean that I'm a bad person. It just means that I had no business having children at a young age. I didn't. Um, I had to drag them along with me. And so I've talked about in my other videos. I, I didn't have it easy. You know, it was tough. I was in and out of my home with my parents because me and my mom didn't get along. We had a very toxic relationship. I was on the streets. It was just really tough. I I wish my children didn't have to see that. But in, I try to look at the positive and I try to talk to them about it is, hey, look at it this way. At least you saw things that you yourself do not want to go through. And so even though they, they don't remember some stuff, they do know, they do remember other stuff. And again, I just wish they, they hadn't been there for that because I was just so young, so young, dragging these two human beings with me as I'm trying to find myself. That being said, um, you know, again, I, I will reiterate this. If you are new to my channel, I have talked about a lot of the struggles that I've gone through. I've gone through struggles with my mom having a toxic relationship with her, you know, having an abusive relationship with my son's dad, going through, you know, addiction, coming overcoming that, just really just so much. And my children had to see all of that, you know, they had to. And I didn't really have a choice. It's not like I could shield them from it. I tried, but, you know, it was hard. It was really hard. I had to struggle and I had to go through those things. Now, um, moving forward, you know, I don't want to go through my whole life of having my kids. This is supposed to be mainly focused on what it was like being a teen mom, but I am going to touch base on what happened between me and the dad. And I just kind of wanted to speak out on it. Now, whether these people watch this video or not, whether these people are following me or lurking through my page and actually finding out what's, what really happened, I could really care less. But I do want to set the record straight because I feel like this was something that needed to be talked about a long time ago. And I'm going to give details that a lot of people don't know. So when I met Kevin, you know, I was young. I was, I've known Kevin since I was eight. And me and him started dating in high school. I've already told that part. And we had two kids. And he was my first, like, real, true, like, I guess, boyfriend, like, serious relationship. And we just, I guess, knew each other so well because we'd been, we'd been going to school, you know, together for so long. And so having two kids with somebody that I've been knowing, it was like having kids with my best friend, you know. And we were. We were really good friends before we started dating. We got along really well. I mean, we had our high school moments like everybody does. You know, we were young. And Kevin quit high school when he was, I think, a sophomore. I think he was like 15, 16. And so he quit high school. I didn't quit. I wanted to get my education even after having two kids. I still graduated with honors early. Um two scholarships. I mean, I think I did really well compared to a lot of teenagers that get pregnant. But as time went on, you know, me and Kevin grew apart. I just put it to you like this. Um, the way I explain it is I was 13 when me and Kevin started dating. That's young. That's really young. I'm still a child. I don't know who I am. I don't know what I want in life. I'm still trying to figure things out. And with everything toxic that I had going on in my life, like with my mother be having young kids um having a relationship was just not something that it started to be like 
something that I felt like I needed, something that I felt like was going to be important. You know, I was thinking about the girls and what was I going to do with my life and moving forward and things like that. So Kevin really wasn't showing me that he was pretty much trying to be grown about it. I mean, he had a job and stuff, but he his idea was, oh, we're going to live with my mom forever and <clears throat> you know, she's going to take care of us. And he was, you know, doing drugs at the time. And at that time, I was green when it came to drugs. I mean, I smoked a little bit of pot, but that was about as far as it got. So I really, like I said, I was still young and I was still, I hadn't had my life experiences yet. I went ahead and broke up with Kevin when I was a senior. I was actually pregnant with my second daughter. You know, Kevin was upset. He was like, you know, I thought we were going to be together. I thought we were going to get married. He wanted to get married right out of high school because that's what we had talked about. But the thing about it is, and I don't feel guilty about it because he's, this really bugged him so much that he talked about this for years. Um, He couldn't understand like what he quote unquote did wrong. It wasn't that he did anything wrong. It's just, I grew up, we grew up and we were going down separate paths you don't really know anything at 13. You don't even know shit at 18. But by the time I was getting close to 18, all I knew is I wanted something more. I wanted something more for myself. I wanted something more for my kids. And I really didn't love him. I just didn't. And I thought I loved him, but I was young. I was young. I didn't really love him. And I started to realize that as time went on. I don't think there's anything wrong. Um, people can judge me for whatever they want, but there's nothing wrong. You can't help who you fall in love with and who you don't. I did it in a very mature manner, even though he was upset about it. Um, he was still there for the girls and we still co-parented very well. We still did things with them, you know, together. We had a great relationship and I was really hoping that it was going to continue down that path for many years to come. Now, as time went on, um... Again, you know, me and Kevin had a great relationship. I just feel like it's because we had already built this, like, friend foundation. So we were always putting the girls first, always, above our relationships, our other relationships, above work, above everything. Family, if I threw a birthday party, I was, I was inviting him, his family. Um, you know, we would take the girls to Chuck E. Cheese. We were taking them to the movies together. We were you know, to the zoo, you know, we were showing the girls that, I'm not gonna lie, you probably would have thought we were still together, but we weren't. We were just really good at co-parenting, and we didn't want the girls to struggle between loving both of their parents or seeing them fight and stuff like that. We kept it very cordial. You know, we had already moved on into other relationships, me and Kevin. You know, Kevin was dating a girl, and I was dating somebody, and we had, you know, like I said, we had an understanding. There was really no, like, toxicity between me and him. At least I didn't feel it at the time. We were just doing our thing. He was working. I was working. Um, and then Kevin ended up going to prison. Now, I'm not going to tell why Kevin went to prison. It's a very serious reason why he went, but it's not my story to tell. So, out of respect... I don't want to talk about why Kevin went to prison, um, but it did affect his life and it affected his daughter's lives in the future. Um, when I found out why Kevin got arrested and why he was going to jail and he was looking at serious um, prison time for what he did, um, you know, I did, I did go visit him and I did get on to him. And tell him, like, look, dude, like, you seriously fucked up. Like, you fucked up. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. You fucked up. And I told him, you know, this affects this affects your children. Like, did you not think of your daughters? Did you not think of them? Because if you go to prison and you get convicted, like, this is going to affect you being with your daughters. It's going to affect you, you know, what are you going to tell them? And so at the time, you know, Kevin knew he was wrong. He knew he was wrong. He knew what he did was wrong. He admitted what he did was wrong. Um, but I also felt like he was also in denial. Um, he was more like trying to defend himself and trying to say, oh, it's her fault. You're 23 years old. You make your own decisions. 
Um, the one thing that I didn't like about him is that he was not trying to take accountability. Um, everything is a choice. And he just wanted to be like, no, blah, blah, blah. And I did try to stand beside Kevin in the beginning just because of the girls. You know, they did love their dad. We did have this great co-parenting relationship. And I knew it was going to affect them. Um, but in the end, you know, when it came to him wanting me to like, talk to the judge or he wanted me to write a letter I was just like no I'm not gonna do all that I don't agree with what you did you can't even take accountability for what you did so I'm not gonna get involved like this is not this is you like you made this decision I don't even know the whole story behind it well at the time I didn't so I'm like I don't even know the whole story behind the whole situation so I can't speak about something that I don't know I'm on the outside looking in this is what this is you like you this is you you have you have to take care of this 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 is a you thing So he did, you know, he did seven years and I let the girls go visit whenever his mom, you know, wanted to, his mom visited him regularly. I don't know where he was at. I just know he was like all around. They were like moving him. And so she would take the girls and they would go visit their dad. Now I did get a lot of heat for this from people were like, oh, how did you let your daughters go to prison and see their dad? This is their dad. Like this is their dad. And I was not going to be the person to say, oh, you can't go see your dad. They love their dad. They were close to their dad. They had a relationship with their dad. Even though I felt like what he did was wrong, they didn't know what he had did at the time. So I was just trying to, like, not lose the father of my children for my children. You know, he was there for, he was there for seven years. And we did write letters to each other. I did keep him, um... I did keep him up with what was going on with the girls. You know, I did let him know, like, what they were doing. I would send him pictures. Again, they were visiting. I felt like I did a really good job as far as being a a baby mama. I wasn't a bitter bitch of a baby mama. Like, I was very supportive. Very supportive for my daughters. Um, And me and the mom at the time, you know, me and her got along. I still let her see the girls. She still helped me with them when I needed to. I had nothing against her. I knew that she was going to be there for her son, and I couldn't. I didn't expect anything less. Um, so then the time came where he got out. Now, around the time that he got out, I was going through a lot of shit. Um, I, I had just gone through, like, my abusive relationship. I was struggling with trying to get sober. I was um, going to AA at the time, NA. I was trying to get my life together. It was my first time really being on my own, and I had to go stay with his mom for a while. Now, he ended up getting out, and I don't remember what year this was. I just remember, I think my son was, like, one. So this may have been 2010. But I remember when he got out, I was still living with his mom. And I was just getting into my first apartment, like, ever on my own. He helped me move. And I remember I was thinking, like, things are going to go back to the way they were. Like, we're going to have this great relationship with the girls. He's going to be there for them. Like, I just really thought things were going to go back to the way they were. So I was treating it as such. I was inviting him to my new apartment. I, he hadn't seen the girls. In, well, he'd seen the girls visiting, but not, like, really been around them. So I was inviting him to my new apartment. He would sleep on the sofa. I would invite him to come over for dinner. Like, I literally moved down the street to be close to him so he could be a part of my daughter's lives. Where I felt like I fucked up is that I felt like maybe I led him on, but I don't really feel like I think I did because I never told him that we were going to get back together. But he automatically started to assume that that meant that we're going to get back together. Now, I haven't been with this person since I was 17. I was 27. 10 years, you think that I want to be with you? I already had other children with other people. My son was one. Like, do you think that I just... I think what happened... this This is my theory. I think he knew of the things that I had been through. And he knew... I think he thought I was vulnerable. Well, I was vulnerable. But I think he was trying to take the advantage of the fact that I was vulnerable. Never. Like, around that time, I was bitter. I was that bitter bitch. I had just... I was so... I 
was just getting over my depression and I was hitting that bitter stage where I was angry. I was mad at everybody. I didn't want shit to do with nobody, especially men. I didn't want shit to do with men. I hated men at the time. I was using them. If you weren't paying my bills, giving me some money, paying for my childcare, whatever, I didn't want shit to do with you. Like, I did not care. The very last thing I was thinking of was being with somebody. And I don't really think he got that. I think he really thought that, oh, she's vulnerable. Let me try to take advantage. He thought wrong. He totally thought wrong. I was not trying to hear it. And me and him started fighting. We started arguing um, a lot. It was intense. You know, we just started fighting, like, all the time, like, all the time. And I wasn't used to that, not with Kevin. Like, we really didn't fight that much around that time. And, you know, he just started showing signs of, like, he was different. And it wasn't, like, I was super surprised about it because he did, he was in prison for a while. But at the same time, it was just, it was more scary than anything because... I don't know what happened to him. I don't know what he, what he went through in prison, you know, and I I really wasn't trying to pry or, you know, say anything negative. I was just trying to be supportive for the girls. And so I just felt like things were just different. Now, around that same time, you know, my youngest daughter, I think what I failed to realize was that my oldest daughter remembered her dad. My oldest daughter remembered because she's the oldest and she was is so much like her dad like even today she's so much like him and she has a lot in common with him compared to my other daughter my other daughter's like me you know so one of them just like their dad which you know happens and then the other one was just like me so my youngest one was telling me like you know she would come back from his house from visiting and say stuff like oh you know something's wrong with daddy like daddy's not the same like daddy's different and she would complain and say stuff and I would tell him like what's going on you know I don't want to be in your business that's you know where you live what you're going through but at the same time like the girls are complaining that you're doing stuff like one of the daughters told me the youngest daughter told me that he was like offering them like beer she's like eight years old why are you offering my daughter beer and she was like yeah like he took us to a park and I was thirsty and he told me to take a drink of his drink and it was a beer and she's like and I threw up and so it was shit like that and then just little things um that they were telling me and you know I was telling him like hey what's going on and he was you know of course angry because I didn't want to be with him and he was just saying shit like oh well, just mind your own business you know you're over there being a little thought you're over there being a little hoe you don't want to be with me so work, mind your own business like stay out of it so I really didn't have a leg to stand on that's the way that's what I looked at at the time I'm just like god oh, like this sucks like I'm you know I'm concerned with the girls but at the same time he's right like I don't have a right to tell him shit so I just really felt like my hands were tied um little things started happening around the same time he started doing shit like showing up to my apartment at 3 o'clock in the morning, banging on my door like an idiot. And I'm just like, what the fuck, dude? Like, what are you doing? And he'd just be going off like, oh, I know there's a guy in there. I know you're fucking some guy. Just being crazy. And I was really shocked. I was really, really shocked. And I ended up, you know, I was getting scared because he was just doing stupid stuff like that. He'd show up at my house. He'd be banging on my door. He'd be sitting outside of my house. He was following me because he'd be like, oh, I saw this guy walking to your house. Oh, I saw you drive over here. Oh, I saw the just like stupid stuff. Um, there was a few times where I'd wake up in the morning to take the girls to school. I'd walk outside and my tires would be slashed and he'd be sitting there. Oh, somebody slashed your tires. That's not a coincidence. You just showed up and you just knew my tires were slashed. Like, what the fuck? Or there was, you know, a brick thrown through my, my car window. I had to go get it fixed. Like, it was stuff like that that was starting to happen. And I'm just thinking, like, this guy's nuts. Like, he's fucking nuts. So as time went on, um, things were getting worse. And I ended up having to call my mom to call him to tell him to leave me alone. Because I was getting scared. I was calling the police on him. I was going to the police station. Um, he was calling my phone, he was threatening me, he was just doing all this crazy shit. And I'm just like, oh my god, like, this is nuts. And, you know, I hid everything from my daughters. My daughters didn't find any of this shit out until they got older. Nobody knew what was going on except for me, his mom, 
and my mom and that's it and him pissed me off is that I live in Dallas I live in Dallas Texas and while I was trying to get these uh you know I was trying to get like a protective order and stuff I was trying to protect myself against him and my daughters but I was really young at the time you guys like I was super young and I was broke I didn't have no money and so he would say stuff like oh you have to let me see my daughters we have a court order and when I would go to the police station the police officers were the police officers literally looked me in my face and said you chose him that's your baby daddy and they would just laugh just laugh and so I felt very like unprotected like these people are supposed to be protecting me protect and serve like what the fuck happened they pretty much told me that he had to put his hands on me before I could get a protective order. And I'm just thinking like, wow, like, so he has to already abuse me for me to prevent being abused in the future. Like, that makes no sense. None. Like, I feel bad for women. I, If you're struggling with this, trust me, I was there. I was there a long time ago. This was years ago. So I've been trying to get a protective order against this person for years. This went on for seven years, by the way. I ended up. Um, you know, I was scared because he was threatening me with like, oh, well, we have a court order. If you violate your court order, you're going to go to jail. And I was nervous at the time because I'm just thinking like, oh my God, he's right. We do have a court order. What if I get in trouble for withholding the children from him? Like what's going to happen? And I didn't have the money for that. I didn't have the resources for that. I didn't know. I didn't know. Like, I just didn't know. I was young, you guys. I was young. Um, finally the day came, the day came where I finally had enough. So my son's dad and I were trying to reconcile. It was like the last time that we ever tried to reconcile. Um, I've already told my story on him, so I'm not gonna get into too much detail, but he ended up trying to reconcile with me. And in the process, he moved in with me. Well, he came to stay with me for a little while. So... Kevin was not happy. Kevin came over one day and found him at my house and was very upset because he knew the history between me and him. And he was upset. He was mad. He he tried to act like he was mad, but I tried to act like he wasn't mad, but he was mad. I could see it on his face. And so he came to pick up the girls. He saw my son's dad there. And he was just like, okay, bet. And then he leaves. Um, I'm sitting at the house. I'm talking to my son's dad. We already codenamed him Ivan. So Ivan's there. I mean, we're talking. And then I get a weird phone call. Now it's like 9, 10 o'clock at night. And <clears throat> I answer it and it's my oldest daughter. And she sounds like she's whispering. And she's like, mommy, can you please come pick us up? And then the phone hangs up. <clears throat> so I call back because I'm like, that's weird. So I call back and I'm just like, he answers the phone and I'm like, hey, what's going on? You know, <clears throat> you know, my oldest daughter, you know, she called. What's going on? Why is she calling? Why was she whispering? What happened? And I can hear one of my daughters crying in the background and it was the youngest one. And I'm like, what happened? And he's like, oh, you know, did she eat dinner before she came over here? And I was like, she had some raviolis. And he's like, well, I made dinner. She didn't want to eat it. So I spanked her. And I was like, okay, well then why does, why is that, what does that have to do with my oldest daughter calling me? Like, what did you do? And he's just like, nothing. And you can tell, I could tell he was drunk. Like his words were slurring. He was laughing. Um, and I'm just like, dude, like, are you okay? Like, do I need to come pick them up? And he's like, no. And then he just starts screaming. And you can just hear him screaming at them. I could hear my daughters crying. I started to get scared. And I'm just like, you know what? You're drunk. You're obviously not in your right mind. And he just starts talking shit like, oh, you're with him. You're being a whore. Don't worry about your daughters. And I'm just like, okay, there it is. Like, you're mad. Okay, I get it. Um, he hangs up the phone. He tells me to go back to being a whore and hangs up the phone. And then that's it. So I'm calling. I'm calling. I'm calling. He's not answering. I'm worried. I'm scared. Why would my oldest daughter creep into what I found out later is in the bathroom and call me to come pick them up? So... I was nervous. I was nervous. I was scared. He was drunk, obviously. I really felt in my soul that something had happened. I take a bat. I still carry a bat with me to this day. It is an aluminum bat. This is not the same bat, but I had a bat just like this. I kept it by my nightstand at night. 
and I slept with a butcher's knife under my pillow. Yes, that's how I slept. I was a single mom with two little kids in the ghetto. Yeah, I didn't have a gun back then. Um, so I take the bat that I had and I drive literally down the road to his house. His mom was at work because she worked at night at some bar. And so I'm driving on the way. And as I'm driving, I call the cops. I'm like, yo, I don't know what's going on. This is a situation. I'm scared. My daughter's crying in the background. He's screaming. He's drunk. The other daughter called. Like, I feel like it was a bad situation. Can you please come? They're like, yeah. Um, I end up calling my mom and my dad, my stepdad, and telling them the same situation. I'm like, I need y'all to help me. I don't know what's going on. So they come all the way from Red Oak. We're in Dallas, by the way. So they're driving all the way from Red Oak in the middle of the night. It's like 11, 12 o'clock at night. So I get there and um, he lives or he lives with his mom, which is like in a condominium. But you have to walk past. You have to walk in this little gate, in this little patio gate. And you have to walk past it and past this like sliding window to walk up to the door um, to knock on the door. Like that was the door. So I walk in and you can see me. You know, I saw my two daughters sitting there. One was crying. The other one was just sitting there. Um, and they saw me walk up as I'm walking past the sliding window. I walk up and he's sitting at, on, on a chair nearby. So he doesn't look directly at me, but I know he saw me on his peripheral because he's looking at the TV. He's eating. He sets his plate down. He reaches under the chair. He gets up and he walks to the door without even glancing at me. So he walks to the door and he opens the door and I'm like, hey, I want the girls. I give them to me. And he pulls out a nine millimeter and he sticks it straight to my forehead. Yeah. And he tells me to the fuck off his property. And I'm like, well, I'm not leaving without the girls. Like, I'm not leaving. He's like, why'd you bring a bat? And I'm like, you're like 6'1". I'm 4'11". You're ginormous. And he was muscular because he just got out of prison. So I'm like, no, I'm, I'm worried. These are my babies. They don't want to be here, so you need to let them come home. Picked me in my stomach. I go flying across the patio on my back, and I see the, both of the girls jump up. And they're crying, and they're screaming, and they're walking to the door, and he slams the door, and he turns around, and he raises his hand. And then, dude, like, that's it. That's all I needed. I literally took that bat, and I just started beating the shit out of the sliding door, and it just shattered the entire sliding door. Um, he turns around and he's like, you crazy bitch. And I go running because I'm just like, oh shit. Like here he comes. Like he's going to come. He's going to hurt me. I go running. I go outside and I'm still waiting for the police. The police haven't showed up. So I call the police again. I tell them there's a gun involved. I'm here. I'm waiting for them. Where the fuck are they at? My parents arrive before they arrive. My parents and his mom arrive. So she comes. She's like, what's going on? I'm telling her the situation. She runs inside. My parents show up. They're there. I'm telling the situation. My stepdad had a gun. He's like, I ain't playing. And so finally Kevin walks out with his mom and my daughters. And my daughters just come rushing to me. And they're just like crying. And like, oh my God, mommy, blah, blah, blah. So um, I look at my youngest daughter's leg. And apparently he had beat her with the belt buckle on her leg. Like her leg was so, like, he just beat her. Out of anger, out of being drunk, he just beat her. And so I was very upset. I was mad. The police show up. They confiscate my bat. Lost my bat. But I got a new one. Um, and then they took. They took the. Um, what do you call it? The testimonies of my daughters. They talked to them in the van by themselves. And everything that I pretty much said. They said. Um, the only thing was that the mom had went into the house. And they weren't supposed to let her go back in there. And when they went in there to look for the gun. They couldn't find it. So I know the mom hid the gun. I did agree with the mom to pay for her sliding window because she was upset about it. But at the same time, you have to take accountability also for your son. Like, I'm not saying it's her fault that her son's crazy, but come on. Like, you know your son's crazy. And after that, me and her didn't have a great relationship. And apparently, she bashed me to her whole entire family, and now they all hate me, which don't bother me none. I still sleep good at night. But <clears throat> that's that's where it basically started and just so you guys know like this went on for seven years like it got to the point where I had to move and then I just decided to go against my court order and not tell him where I live 
he kept trying to threaten me with it but i'm like dude you don't have any money you haven't paid child support ever like if you take me to court they're not gonna come they're not gonna throw me they're not gonna hold me in contempt they're gonna hold you in contempt but i'll be more than happy to show them all the police reports that i made throughout seven years that you've been doing stupid stuff um eventually i did get a protective order it took seven years it took seven years and it took me moving to a totally different city. I mean, I'm not far, but it took me moving to a different city for them to take notice. And so I finally got my protective order. Unfortunately, that's how it ended with me and Kevin. Um, he's going to tell a different version. He still doesn't take accountability for why he even went to prison. He doesn't give any accountability for shit. Um, my daughters hardly even talk to him. I told them as they got older and they got their own phones and when they moved out, like, hey, you're more than welcome to go try to reconcile with your dad. You're more than welcome to try to make things cordial or try to get closer to him. And I, I, I encouraged it. I'm just like, just don't get your hopes up that he's changed. And so, unfortunately, they don't have a relationship with him. But that has nothing to do with me. It never has. It, it's always been me leaving it up to them. But... I couldn't allow you to treat me in a certain way or take your anger out on my children. So I had to do what I had to do for my family, and I don't regret it. Um, now my daughters are older, so it's great. <laughs> I don't have to deal with that shit no more. Um, you know, they're adults now, so it makes it a lot easier. But that's what I'm saying about having kids at such a young age. You don't want to put your kids to that. You don't want, you don't know how things are going to turn out. I'm not saying it's like that for everybody. I'm just saying being a teen mom is, was one of the hardest things I've had to go through in my life. Um, it, it was tough. And I don't recommend. I do not recommend. I give it one star. No, I give it. I give, you know, I give it I give it three stars. Only because I, I've said it before. It was like raising my own little sisters. Like, I love my daughters. They're amazing girls considering all the shit that we've been through together. They're amazing girls. And I talk to them like as if we are sisters. And I want them to know that I wasn't the perfect mom, but I did try my best for being so young and doing it on my own with all the obstacles. And so I'm very proud of them. They're, they're good girls. So that's my story of being a teen mom. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you enjoyed also seeing me do my St. Patty's Day look. I am half Irish, by the way. I'm half Mexican, half Irish. So I'm double crazy. You know what I mean? Posting on my Instagram. Everything's under Sonya Blade. And I linked everything in my bio and in my channel. So you can find everything there. I hope you enjoyed this. If you have, I'd love to hear anybody who has been a teen mom or your opinions on it. I don't like to hear opinions from people who have not been in my shoes or have not been down these roads because you really don't know unless you've done it. But anyway, besides that, please leave comments below. I'd love to hear from you and what you guys think, either about the look or about the story or anything. Um, don't forget to like, subscribe, and the little notification bell so you know when I drop my tea times. Until next time, you guys, don't forget to love yourself because you are all you have. Thanks. Bye,